Hi, I'm Mark Logan. Welcome to the Photographer Academy, and today we're talking about one light for boudoir. Um, I'm a massive fan of deep, dark shadows, and I think when we start to kind of work in our kind of confidential boudoir style in 50 shades of grey, a little bit more kind of edgy, um, one light really kind of comes into its own. I, I kind of really want to run through what I do in the clock and compass in my normal kind of portrait techniques, showing you the dynamic of where the light has got to be positioned for the different kind of shots and things really. So if you haven't watched the uh, clock and compass, what I'm referring to is uh, the client or the model in this case, Kelsey for the day, uh, is in the middle of the, the clock. That's in the position, yep. Uh, the camera is referred to as being always in the six o'clock position. So as camera moves, okay, sorry about this, the clock face moves with it and things really, all right? But the subject is always in the middle, but the, the positioning of the body will change possibly at the same time as camera moves or as the light moves, the body will change. So when I kind of talk about more dynamic images, we're usually looking at light that is positioned from the three o'clock, uh, sorry, from the nine o'clock position in a clockwise direction around to the nine o'clock. That is gonna give me more drama the image guaranteed. When I'm looking at a photograph to be a little bit more lit, we're looking at the light coming from the three o'clock position in a clockwise direction around towards the nine. The closer it gets to the six o'clock position, the flatter the light is gonna be. Flat light by its own design is fat light. So in other words, <laughs> I carry a little bit of weight myself. So it means that if the light was kind of flush on like it is here now, pretty much I'm being created bigger. Whereas I start to turn my body to the side, if, it was, if the background wasn't as bright, I would start to actually thin out a little bit more. Plus my face would be thin because of the lighting direction that we've got here. So what I wanna show is actually where we move the camera position, plus also where we move the uh, light position in comparison. So as I said, we're not really doing kind of the conventional bud boudoir images, we're kind of using kind of parts of the body to really kind of light to actually show the demonstration really. Kelsey, should we come on in please darling? So uh, to begin with, um, I'm gonna get Kelsey just actually into the middle of the o'clock. So she's gonna be uh, pretty much just on the edge of the white background doesn't really matter where she is in the set. Um, why? Because basically I'm going to be moving the camera and I'm going to be moving the actual uh, lighting as well. Okay. So if I was just, um, let's just do a, a step kind of almost here and kind of just popping the hands behind the back. All right. It, it's kind of a, a nothing pose. It's a nice pose, but it's really not doing anything. But first things first, you'll see that we're using a harder light, light source in the form of uh, raw flash, yeah, and it's just got barn doors on the edges to control the light coming through, and I can narrow down the light even more by just moving in the, the bottom, uh, uh, sorry, the side flags, or if I want to control it top to bottom, I move those out and I start to actually kind of shape this light in. So barn, uh, barn doors, big friend of yours if you like the likes of hard lighting. So the closer I get the light into the six o'clock position, in other words, near camera, um, and we're only using the one light, as you can see, we're metering to 4.5. Let's get the quick shot, okay? So we're gonna just uh, crop Kelsey's head, head off. Uh, and you can see though, as far as the lighting position, it is, as I said to you, quite flat and we want to create more modeling of the body. Now, it's going to come through pose, and it's going to come through light, and it's going to come through camera position as well, all right? But I can show you straight, uh, straight away by just moving this light to the four o'clock position, okay? So remember, I'm at the six, over there's the three o'clock, and it's getting closer and closer towards there. If I do exactly the same shot, we've got more dynamic shaping as far as the cleavage is concerned. Um, we've got more dynamic shadow actually running on the left hip as we look at it as well. We've got more dynamic, that's it. M bigger shadow, more dynamic, more edgy image. If I roll this around towards the three o'clock position, do pretty much the same thing. We're gonna increase the cleavage shadow. Uh, we're gonna increase the cleavage shadow straight away. So you can see we're getting to actually a way more dramatic light, light source. As we continue to move this light away from camera position, it's now not gonna light any part of the body. Uh, it's now kind of at the two o'clock kind of position. Uh, it's what it's doing now is kind of just beginning to light the edge of the arm, the inner of the back and so on with it. So if we understand, if we move the light source, 
it will basically change this whole kind of dynamic to the body shape, we can actually start to complement these things together. So if I leave that light where it is now, and I'm looking to actually create a more dramatic style of image, the first thing would be to do the, uh, the change of the pose, yeah? Uh, let's do a slight butt shot. Should we, if you just turn the body around towards here, please, darling? That's great. Turn the body back towards there. There you go. Whoa. So now by allowing that light just to kind of spill onto the bottom, um, we've already got that more dynamic image. The same thing applies though. Kels, let's pretend to do your back strap, shall we? Same thing. Keep it. Um, nice pose, animating, great light with it and things really, so it kind of works together. If I move this light in though back to the three o'clock or nearer to the four o'clock position, remember what we're doing, we're flattening that light so it's not going to be as effective. Same shot for me again. So we've kind of lost the kind of the, 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 the beautiful shape of the bottom just because we've basically moved the light to a flatter position doesn't mean that if the light is stuck in a place or you can't move the light more to a different direction that we kind of fall, uh, fall apart. What I can do is move the camera position to the new six o'clock. So darling, if you turn the body towards me a little bit more, uh, bottom, sorry, just towards me, a little, there you go. And I do exactly the same shot. Can you just tie the, uh, just do the bra strap? That's great. Relax. Great. Now you can see just by moving the camera position back to a new point, all I've created now is a different direction to the light, uh, the light source. And this is where we kind of talk about the clock and compass. Wherever we move uh, around the clock, we're in relationship to where the pose and the light is, you're going to dynamically change your image. So remember, the closer the light is to the camera position, the flatter and the fatter the body will look. The more you move the uh, light away from the subject, the better the image is going to be in dynamics. So when I'm looking to just say shoot a sticky out butt one, sorry, I'm just going to push that back to there. Okay, so we turn the bottom round to that position for me. That's lovely. And just push the bottom out fully. Keep it relaxed. So now all of a sudden, we get that more dynamic image. Let's put the hands right above, please, Kels, and do the same shot. Relax. So we've got this lovely light, we got the dynamic, but if I just turn the body to me a touch, whoa, and do the same shot for me again, relax. We've got this different kind of shape and body, and all of a sudden we're beginning to develop a technique that will give more drama in a boudoir. More often than not, I'm a natural light photographer. So in other words, I use natural light before reflector, reflector before a flash, and flash is a last resort. So as it is, where we've got all this fantastic light coming through my church windows in my studio here, uh, basically uh, allows me to really kind of move the camera position. Why? Because the light is fixed. So because the window is fixed in a place, in the clock and compass, I have to move the camera position to change the light position. That's all I've got to do. If I'm working with flash photography, like we just demonstrated to as such, I've got total control of the positioning, the size, and the softness of the hardness of the flash, and I can move it into any position that I want to be. So the clock and compass works absolutely the same in all types of photography, whether you're shooting boudoir today, whether you're shooting portraiture, whether you're shooting headshot photography, it's all about how more dynamic do you want the photograph to look. That's it. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.